Hey what's up guys, today we're going to do our third person camera script and we're going to end up with some result like that so it's going to be pretty neat and pretty useful for our game. So without further ado guys, let's get started. Okay so let's start this right away. We're going to go in the state folder, create a new C sharp script and we call this one of course third person camera. Open this up. And I'm gonna I'm gonna open the first person uh, camera script as, as well because we're gonna be copying everything in there and we're gonna move that over to our third person script. So copy everything in there, and everything should be replaced. Now let's fix this public class third person camera. We're gonna keep the Y angle. Um, we're also going to keep the offset, but the offset we're gonna change this a little bit. Uh, instead of having a float offset we're going to have a private vector 3 offset and uh, we're pretty much just gonna have a vector 3 uh, position offset from the center of the player so uh, we want to have the offset a little bit above the player so we're not looking at his feet but we're looking at his uh, say head or body so private vector 3 offset and mine is going to be vector 3 dot up for now as always you can modify that to fit your need but this is uh, this is going to be mine. Okay. All right. So as for the rest, we're gonna keep the current X, the current Y, sensitivity as well. We are also going to add one more thing. We're going to add a private float that we're gonna call distance, and this is going to be distance in between the player and the camera. So we're in uh, a third person. So um, pretty much just the distance between the player and the camera. Uh, we, we won't be able to modify that at real time for now, but a little bit later on we'll go ahead and script something with, the, say, the uh, the mouse wheel that allows you to go um, closer to the player and a little bit further, just like in, say, uh, MMOs. Okay, we got distance, we got the values here, and now um, the big the big function is going to be the process motion in here, it's not going to be the process rotation. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to take everything from the process rotation, we're going to cut it, and paste it inside the process motion. So the process motion is now going to be using the current X and current Y, and we're also going to, uh, to clamp the angle here as well. But what we'll do is a little bit different. We're going to declare ourselves a new function below that, so a private vector3, calculate, calculate position and this is based off uh, something I saw a long time ago it was a good third-person camera tutorial um, and uh, what they did is basically declare a vector 3 direction it is going to be equal to new vector 3 then you assign 0 0 and minus distance and then after that we do quaternion rotation is equal to quaternion dot Euler and in here we feed the current y, then the current x, just like we did in the last process rotation we did, and then a zero at the very end. And what we return here is, actually we don't have it yet, we return a, the position of the player plus is offset plus the rotation times the direction. So that looks a little bit weird uh, when I say it like that, but um, let's go ahead and declare ourselves a private transform look at and this is going to be our look at target. In this case, it is uh, going to be the player. So, uh, just before we keep going in the uh, process motion or calculate, mo uh, calculate position function, we're going to create ourselves a quick start function. Or actually, we don't need to create ourselves a start function. We have a construct. So, do a public override void construct. In there, we say look at is equal to transform because it is uh, our transform that we're currently looking at. A little bit later we can do um, something else, so say the third person camera can go uh, look at, let's say, another player or something like that. Okay, so now we got to look at, we are going to come back here in the calculate position and do a return, look at dot position plus the offset, of course, and then plus rotation, which is a quaternion times direction. Now I'm not quite sure how to explain you how this works, but we're just going to assume it does for now. <laughs> All right. So um, now the, the calculate uh, position returns us a vector 3 and this is the vector 3 we want to be positioning our camera at. So take this and instead of returning quaternion up here we're going to say return calculate position. And of course we need to do these um, 
uh, these calls before that because we use the current X and current Y inside the calculate position. So let's try that in game real quick, see what it gives us. Uh, first we have an error, so let's go fix that. Quaternion process rotation returns us nothing, so let's just do a return quaternion.identity for now. Do we have any more errors? We don't have any more errors, but we need to go change something, I just realized. We have to go back in the camera mother. And, uh, okay, we have a small error here. Say, use original file. Okay, um, we have to change the first person camera here when we start the camera mother for a third person camera. So now we should start the game using a third person camera. Press play. Let's look at what we have. Okay, so, um, I'm gonna select my camera here so you can see it in the scene. I'm moving around the player, so this is pretty much what I want, and now if I try up and down, and I'm going to move this uh, axis so you can see it, up and down, up and down, okay, so um, this pretty much works already in terms of the position, we have the right position, of course we need to change the rotation around so we can actually see the player, but uh, in terms of position, this works, we, want, we might want to clamp uh, the this one, it might go a little bit too uh, too far down there. So uh, before we do anything, let's go ahead and look at our player. So it's going to be simple, really simple actually. Remember the process rotation we got here? We're going to modify it just a little bit. So we're going to say, um, well first what we need to do is have a reference to the container we have. So let's say private transform camera container and we're also going to assign that in the start, so we'll say camera container is equal to mutter dot camera container. And now that we have this value, we are simply going to say, well, camera container, please look at my look at dot position plus is offset, just like this. And now the camera container is going to rotate. Uh, basically, it's just going to reorient itself so it looks at the player. And uh, just to make sure it really does, we're going to say return camera container dot rotation. Now let's go back in game, press play, and we have something that works and that doesn't look bad at all actually. It's a big step towards making our game. So I'm really happy we got this far. Remember, you can always modify the distance in between the camera and the player. Say I'll just make it public for now so we can have a good look at what it does. So public float distance. You don't have to modify this. I'm going to switch it back, uh, back in a moment. So I'm going to take my player and just play with the distance just a little bit. And this is pretty much what it gives us. So so we put something really crazy like this. We can always modify that a little bit later on. And of course, this is not the last iteration of our third person camera script. We're going to be adding way more feature in there um, as time goes. So maybe a smooth. Actually, we're going to add a smooth a little bit later on. We're going to also add dynamic distance. So we can switch distance at runtime using, I don't know what input just yet, but we'll find out when time comes. And also, of course, we're going to start detecting the collision of the camera so we can't go through floors or objects and yeah all right guys we'll see that a little bit later on what we can do with this but if you remember in the first episode um, I've said that we need to get the game running as fast as possible and have a good game flow going so we we get a good glimpse of what the game is going to be and we can determine what's fun or not it was a good step towards that we have a working third-person character controller we're gonna be adding more stuff to that but for now this is pretty much it for the controls of the player Okay guys, if you enjoyed this series so far, I'd really appreciate if you could leave it a like or if this was helpful to you. And uh, also, if you have any question or comment, you can always post them in the comment section below. I answer as soon as I can. And please subscribe for the rest of this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.